We see people sleepwalking in movies and on TV all the time. You might throw the term around in casual conversation, like early on a Monday morning when you feel like you're sleepwalking through the workday. But plenty of people, mostly children, actually struggle with sleepwalking. And sleepwalking can be scary, disorienting, and dangerous. So let's talk a little about what sleepwalking is, why it happens, and what you can do about it if you, or someone you know, is a sleepwalker. Sleepwalking is also known as somnambulism, and it usually occurs during deep sleep. A sleepwalker will usually perform complex actions while they're still asleep, like getting dressed, moving furniture, and yes, walking around. Sleepwalking falls under a sleep disorder family known as parasomnias. Parasomnias are defined as any unusual behaviors during sleep. This includes sleep talking and sleep terrors. These disorders sit on the border of sleep and wakefulness. That's why the actions seem highly unusual for someone who's supposed to be asleep. But still, you can usually identify sleepwalking by a few telltale signs. First, they might have glassy eyes with a blank stare on their face. In fact, most people sleepwalk with their eyes open. Second, they might perform routine tasks like getting dressed or eating breakfast. Third, sleepwalkers could engage in sexual behavior, also known as sexsomnia. And finally, some may also urinate in places that aren't the bathroom. We should point out that in rare cases, these behaviors can turn violent or extremely dangerous. Some sleepwalkers have been caught trying to drive their cars, and that likely isn't going to end well. So, should we be worried about a bunch of sleepwalking people getting behind the wheel? No. For starters, sleepwalking is more common in young children than adults. One study found that about one in three kids between two and 13 years old experience a sleepwalking episode. Meanwhile, only about 4% of adults report sleepwalking. But putting an exact number on it is tough because people don't remember sleepwalking. Unless they get caught in the act, they could go their whole lives not knowing they sleepwalk. There is not one main factor that causes sleepwalking. The best we can say is that it happens during deep sleep, when something partially wakes you up, but not enough to consider yourself awake. So while we can't say for certain what causes sleepwalking, we've narrowed it down to a handful of factors that could put you at a higher risk. The first factor is that it runs in the family. In fact, there's a 50-50 chance that if a parent sleepwalks, their children will too. Next, sleep deprivation could also play a role. You'll spend more time in deep sleep after sleep deprivation, which puts yourself at a higher risk of sleepwalking. Third, pay attention to what medications you're taking. Some medications knock you out cold, and this sedative sleep also has been shown to increase your chances of sleepwalking. Fourth, mind your booze. Alcohol messes with your sleep stages, which can cause sleepwalking, among other parasomnias. Another possible cause of sleepwalking could be a head injury. Studies show that brain injuries, head trauma, basically anything that causes your brain to swell can lead to sleepwalking. But perhaps it wasn't injury, but rather just being sick. Fevers, especially in children, have been linked to sleepwalking episodes as well. And finally, stress could be a factor too. There's a clear line between stress and bad sleep. Too much stress will increase your risk of sleepwalking and other parasomnias. Your stress could be physical, emotional, or caused by a sudden change. For example, when you're trying to sleep while traveling. Another thing to note is that sleep disturbances don't exist in a vacuum. There's often another underlying condition that's triggering your sleepwalking. Obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, is one. OSA is when your airway gets blocked at night, causing lapses of breath. It can be enough to kick you out of deep sleep without waking you up, leading to a sleepwalking episode. Restless leg syndrome, or RLS, is another. It's when you feel the urge to move your legs at night when lying down. Like OSA, this can cause nighttime arousal without waking you up. Now, instead of shaking your legs, you're walking around. We can often think of sleepwalking as a humorous act, something associated with slapstick comedy. There are more than a few social media accounts that show people doing ridiculous things when they sleepwalk. And sure, it can be funny, but it can also be very dangerous. So you sleepwalk, <laughs> how much trouble can it be? In August 2017, a New York boy stole a car from a hotel parking lot and drove onto the interstate while sleepwalking. Then he allegedly pulled over and started walking in the middle of the highway. In December 2017, a UK man fell down the stairs while sleepwalking, leaving him with a severe spinal injury. Thankfully, he regained his ability to walk after years of intensive PT. And in a blend of both comedy and the severity of sleepwalking, the comedian Mike Birbiglia is open about jumping from a hotel window while he was sleepwalking. There are two important details. One, I was on the second floor. Two, the window was closed. So I jumped through a window 
like the Hulk. He escaped with only 33 stitches, but still. In most cases, sleepwalking doesn't require any immediate interventions. Episodes are far and few between and don't pose much risk to the sleepwalker. Treatment ultimately depends on the person's age, how frequently they sleepwalk, and how much danger they pose to themselves and others. If it does reach a concerning point, here are some steps you can take to ensure a sleepwalker's safety, whether it's you or someone you love. Keep weapons and sharp objects locked away and out of reach. Close and lock all doors and windows. Clean up toys and remove any tripping hazards from the floor. And consider installing motion sensor lights. If it's really bad, consider door alarms that alert you when someone leaves the room or climbs out of bed. You can also try anticipated awakening to prevent someone from sleepwalking. Most sleepwalkers experience an episode at the same time every night. If you can wake them up before they do, you can avoid the sleepwalking episode. Alternatively, cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, is a type of mental therapy that can counteract negative thoughts and actions. It's been proven to improve sleep for patients with insomnia and can prevent stress-related sleepwalking episodes. There are no anti-sleepwalking drugs on the market. However, you can try melatonin supplements to help you sleep at night. Talk with your doctor before trying any prescriptions or over-the-counter options. If you catch someone in a sleepwalking episode, don't jar them awake. It can be confusing and disorienting. They may lash out in fear or anger. Instead, gently guide them back to bed. Speak in a calm voice and use light touches to direct them. If you have to wake them up, do so as gently as possible. Oh my god. <gasps> Sleepwalking isn't super common. Still, it can be disturbing, dangerous, and scary for those who struggle. Talk with your doctor if sleepwalking is becoming a problem. It may be a sign of an underlying sleep condition. Thanks for watching, everyone. Sleep well.